Hi, and welcome to the Zen Beats How-To Series. This video is going to cover the Loop Builder sequencing basics. There are three main elements to sequencing in Loop Builder. You have tracks, patterns, and song parts. Starting with tracks, you can think of tracks as individual band members. And in Zen Beats, you can add as many as you need. To add, just go to the plus track button. This will allow you to add additional audio tracks, instrument tracks, drum tracks, and more, which we'll cover in another video. In this particular demonstration, I've already added four audio tracks. Now let's look at the next element in Loop Builder sequencing, patterns. I'm looking at my drum machine track here. I already have two patterns populated. To hear them, just press the play button. When you do that, the pattern is going to play over and over again. This will allow you to go to additional tracks and record onto it without the music ever stopping, keeping you right in your creative flow. If you want to play the next pattern, just press the play button here like so, and it's going to automatically jump over right on the next bar, so it's seamless. And of course, if you want to add more patterns, just go to the empty cell next to it, and you can record a pattern using our on-screen instruments, or press the plus button to add a blank one. If you want, you can also copy and paste another pattern on top. To do so, just touch and hold or right click on any existing pattern and then select copy. Then go to where you want to paste it, touch and hold or right click and select paste. Let's get a beat going and now let's add another instrument on another track. I'm going to go to my extra drum loops track here. And now since this is an audio track, I could record audio onto it or I could also browse from our vast loop library. To do so, just press the plus button here and head over to the loop browser like so. The loop browser will allow you to search for loops, filter loops by pack type, and also filter by instrument type. Let's check out some drums. Now while it's playing, you can audition any of these loops just by clicking the play button and waiting for the next bar to drop. The loop will come in on the next bar in sync so you'll know if it works right away. Let's go ahead and add a couple of loops. To add it, you can just press the plus button, like so, and you can trigger it to play along. Let's add a few more drum loops. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to add it another way, which is via drag and drop. We're going to grab a couple of different loops here. I'm going to drag this one here, like so, and this one over here. Now let's do the same thing, but let's add a bass element. With my sound browser open, I can quickly just select the bass filter and check out all the bass loops in this pack. Let's audition a couple. I think I'll add this one. This one as well. And why not this one too? Now I've got patterns on three different tracks. We've got some good drums, we've got some bass, let's add some synth parts next. Select the synth filter here and audition some synth sounds. If the audition is loud, you can adjust the audition mix by turning it down here like so. There we go, that's a good pad sound. Let's drag and drop that over here. Let me drag and drop this one. And this one. Here we go. So these patterns across these four tracks make up what we call a song part. Now instead of playing loops individually, you can play an entire song part by pressing the play button on the song part down here. This allows you to play the different sections of your songs in one click. Let's hop to part B. And C. You might have guessed, but you can think of song parts as parts of a song. Part A could be an intro. Part B could be a verse. Part C could be a chorus. You can customize your song parts by clicking on the menu button here and actually giving it a name, changing its color, duplicating a part, 
cutting, copying, pasting, deleting, everything you'd expect. Let's say you don't want part A to play over and over indefinitely. Let's say you want part A to flow into part B and to C like you were in a linear arrangement. You can do that by enabling part follow here. Turning this on, you'll also see the same icon down here. Now, when I press play, the entire part is going to play once and then seamlessly jump to part B, part C, and then back to part A again. And of course, if at any point in time you want to rearrange your parts, maybe you want the song to start with part B, just drag it and drop it. With part follow enabled, you also get another option here, which is loop count. Maybe I want part B to play twice. Maybe I want part A to play four times. You get the idea. That's the basics of Loop Builder sequencing. Stay tuned for our next video, where we'll show you how to transfer songs you've created in Loop Builder on the timeline view and much more.